I'm Liron Cohen. And I'm Mimi Torchin. And you're listening to Lady Parts TV, the podcast. Whee! Everybody. Good morning, afternoon, evening, and whenever it is you'll be listening to this. Um, we're very happy to be back. Last week, uh, if you haven't listened yet, we did a podcast about our, our election and uh, political, political system. system. For those of you who are interested in knowing more, or for those of you who want to commiserate uh, and celebrate, because actually while we yes. were taping the podcast, we got the it announcement. Was fantastic. <laughs> live, live joy. A live reaction, yes. So... Um, go back and check that out. But because we didn't do a podcast last week, and because this is November, and a lot of stuff happens in November... Including in case my birthday. Know, including your birthday. Coming up. We'll celebrate. Um, so we have a lot to talk about. So we decided to do a double podcast episode, and we will post one uh, this weekend, and we'll post the second part of it uh, probably on Monday. Monday. So stay tuned. There's lots of good stuff lots. in both podcasts. You do not want to miss them. So, we have very, very small stats. I have to say, I, I kind of uh, uh, dropped the ball a little bit this week. I didn't do a lot of them because I just didn't feel like it. So, we tallied nine primetime shows, out of which written or co-written by women, three, which is 33%, and the same as directed, 3%, by, 33% by women. I feel women. like there might have been more. You know, you feel like it should be, but I don't know that it was. There yeah. was more. Um, but anyway, uh, all of our shows are coming back this week. We are well, back we to having a full DVR. It's exciting. So we'll have more stats. Our DVR is still full because I haven't stopped watching it. <laughs> so the first movie that we have to recommend to you is called Dating Amber. And it's uh, available on demand and on digital November 10th. So it's already out there. Written and directed by David Frayne, and it's Irish. Irish, and is it's it? <laughs> starring. Uh, so these are Irish names. So pardon me, Fionn O'Shea, uh, who apparently is I a think normal it's O'Shea. people. O'Shea, mm-hmm. uh, who apparently is a normal people, which a lot of people see. So you might know him. We didn't, he's but cute. he is. He's precious. Uh, Lola Pettigrew, who was fantastic, wonderful. Sharon Horgan, whom we, we, will love, know and we love, uh, and Barry Ward, and. Um, this movie specifically spoke to me for two, three main reasons, I would say. The first is, uh, it's a typical British film, full of charm, full of it's quirk. It's just a, a joy to watch. Um, the second reason is it took place in the 90s. These kids are teenagers in the 90s when I was a teenager, so um, I could relate to a lot of their cultural experience. And the third being, they're gay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> So this is a story about... Um, Triple header. <laughs> um, about two gay teens, a boy and a girl, uh, who decide to pretend to be a couple uh, in order to stop the harassment that they're getting from their classmates, their classmates the, the suspicion... Side eyes from their parents. From their parents, <laughs> exactly. Um, and I want to read to you uh, a quote from the director because I found this very heartwarming. And he says, quote, The film is my love letter to all those kids who felt different and needed to escape uh, in order to be themselves, but while I was making the deeply this deeply personal story, I never realized how much it would have it would resonate with kids now. We may have come a long way, but we still live in a straight world. These queer kids struggling to come to terms with their gender and sexuality are still everywhere. They are in every small town across Ireland, just as they are in America. They are there today just as much as they were in the past, and they deserve to see their stories shaped by love and laughter and I, I love that at some point he kind of equated it to like ladybirds but for gay people Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's true it's like you know teenage kids teenagers have so many of those teenage movies Mm -hmm. many Um, many many of them many it's a genre and we don't really and this was just that for us and I loved every second of it it was so charming it was so sweet it had a lot to say it was Um, beautiful to look at because well Ireland yes and uh, I just want to say it's it's very autobiographical and apparently when you watch it, there is a sex ed video that the kids are shown in school, and it's run by a nun. It was it's presented by a nun, and apparently it's verbatim based on a video that they showed him, <laughs> the director, in school. <laughs> 
so because when you see it, when I saw it, I thought, oh my god, because the rest of the movie is very realistic. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is verging on parody. But apparently, that was the most realistic thing in that movie. So um, I can't recommend it more highly. It's called Dating Amber. Even though it's about teenagers, you will love it. Um, and uh, yeah, just really, really enjoyed it. So it's a new series uh, premiered on Hulu November 10th. Uh, it's called A Teacher, uh, created by Hannah Fidel and uh, starring Kate Mara and Nick Robinson. Um, and it's based on a film that she made uh, in two- 2013, uh, this is a, I think, ten part series, and they made the very odd choice of making them half hour. Yeah, they're not even they're like twenty five minutes. I, I I can't quite figure out why because it's very much a drama, uh, and um, I don't know. That's a little disconcerting. But when you, since you can binge it, well, that's oh the no, thing. you can't I don't know binge if it if it's on Hulu. Exactly, we binged it because we got it on the press right. side. Right. I don't know if usually Hulu does you know, releases three episodes at once and then one every week. I don't know how they're doing this one. But if if it's not available to binge, that I would find it very unsatisfying to only have to only be able to watch twenty five minutes, minutes at a time, week, yeah, yeah. Uh, or else save it uh, up, wait and then binge. Exactly, yeah. it's um, very bingeable. It's a very 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 good movie uh, Show. Such series. It feels like a movie. I, I I guess maybe Kate Mara. I always think of her as as, as a movie. Well, star. these days, you know, yeah. movie TV. That's right. It's, it's almost all, the same it's thing. It's all the same thing, um, and. Um, it's a, it's different. It's a little bit different than you would have expected it well, to tell be. Well, them what it's about. Oh, it's about, <laughs> hello, uh, a predatory teacher who has an affair with uh, one of her students. Well, he's 18. Yes, he's 18, but I don't so know So he's he of the age of consent, but still uh, the, the difference... Well, he was 17 when it started, so... The ba- um, and the balance of power between them, of, of course, course, well, make it... That's, uh, the, that's the big no-no. Right. It's not so much the age difference as it is, I would say that, wouldn't I? As it is the... Uh, the <laughs> well, when we're, we're, when we're talking minors, it is very much the age yes, difference. Yes, it's true. But, uh, well, I don't know what the age of consent would have been. I always thought it was 17. I think it's different for every state, and this is Texas, so you oh, know, probably God. 12. <laughs> exactly. Um, yes, it takes place in Austin. And um, anyway, it's very good. It's very surprising. It catches you off guard. It goes places. Uh, we haven't watched all of it yet. Yeah, we're, we're but the last it, uh, three. I, I'm, I'm eager to see them. Uh, it jumps, you know, a few months at a time, uh, and it goes places that are kind of uh, surprising. Uh, it could have been very cliched. Um, there are other f- films that have been very cliched about something like this. This one is not. And um, I thought at first it was based on Mary Kay Tourneau. Well, t- t- you know, it Tourneau, may have been inspired. But it was. It has to be inspired by because it's very different kinds of people. And um, it's interesting and it's well acted. Very well liked and very well written. Very well written. All, everybody is good. Uh, some of the high school uh, seniors do look like they're 30. Because they because practically, they practically are. are, <laughs> are yes. uh, but not this boy. This boy is uh, lovely. Yes. And um, I think it's a... Uh... I think it's a very interesting look at it because it looks at it from many different angles yes, and not, not the ones that you usually would expect maybe, but uh, very complex. Very I'm interested complex to see where... It's Where it lands. ultimately going. Yeah. Yes. Because mm-hmm. it is, I think, a miniseries. I don't think there's an expectation of a second of series. A second series. So, no. yeah. Season. Yeah. You're, you're talking. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm talking Australia, British. I'm know. still in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, so, a teacher. A teacher uh, on Hulu now. Um, absolutely recommended very highly. Absolutely. Okay. Now, a new documentary also premiering on Hulu November 13th called I Am Greta, mm. and I'm sure that you already can figure out which Greta we're talking about, uh, directed by Nathan Gross- Grossman. This is the story of Greta. Now, I it's written... It's Thurnberg. No, it's written Thurnberg, oh. but she kept saying Thurnbay, Thurnbay or something like that. Yeah. So I, yeah, anyway, you must have heard about Greta, who is the 15 going on 9. I mean, she yeah, looks, she looks so young. Now, yeah. When she started, she, she was, was 15. 15. She looks so young. Uh, the massive climate activist who became... Uh, the face. Absolutely. Of, she's she's embryo, uh, uh, emblematic, embryonic, yes. and embryonic. <laughs> she is the face of climate activism, especially among the young generation. Uh, she rose to fame when she had a one-girl strike practically outside, yeah, outside outside the parliament, parliament in Sweden. And uh, she created a huge movement, especially, again, of, of young people. But also, yes, but you she's see, invited to speak all over the world. 
Um, and she inspires people of all absolutely. ages. Absolutely, and she doesn't pull any punches. She's got Asperger's, um, and she's a fascinating little girl. Uh, she blew, as I put it in my notes, she blew every socket in my mind. Absolutely. She was just uh, so passionate and so actually articulate and oh so are she's so, so smart highly highly intelligent and committed to the nth degree the culmination of the movie is her going to uh, a, con- a cl- climate conference at the UN in New York and she because she doesn't fly because uh, aviation is so terrible for the environment and I don't think they had the money to take any kind of an ocean liner um, uh, well, also, it would have taken weeks to do an ocean liner. Uh, a, a, and ocean liners are guzzlers themselves. A guy uh, offers to take her across in his sailboat. Which is very uh, and sustainable, oriented, and everything, and, and, and is so fast. fast. Oh, my God. But it's a, it, it, at that point, it kind it's of becomes harrowing. like an action-adventure Yes, movie. it's amazing. But, but I, I just have to uh, also, I admire the filmmakers so much. They did... A, fantastic job. I don't know how they knew to follow her from the beginning. I, I'm, I'm wondering if they restaged that beginning Or somehow. if there was some of that was home videos, maybe? Maybe. Might be. Because... Her father is totally, completely, utterly devoted Well, I mean, both, both her. her parents. Oh, I yes. think they just kind of divided roles yes, that her mother was staying at home with her sister and the father basically took her everywhere and was responsible to, you know, make sure that she ate and, you know... Yes, because, because she was very, you know, because of her Asperger's and because of her sensitivities and she her selective muteness, which mutism. she... Mutism. Um, she, she went for almost a whole year... She, she didn't talk to anybody but her family for three years at one point and yeah. she almost starved to death. Yeah. She couldn't eat. She was too upset about things. She was too upset about the environment mm-hmm. and um, she... I'm, I'm, oh. I'm so in awe of this girl because especially when you think about her, you know, again, selective mutism, she's so sensitive to the world and she's so full of anger and fear and resentment and, you know, for what pe- for what grown-ups are doing to this planet. And, uh, and she being, gets angry. Her speeches get angrier and angrier yeah, she, and she's angrier. she's disillusioned with oh, all those grown-ups. She blames who, them. Well, she, she, and also they invite her to come and speak and they just basically use her as a token. Yeah, exactly. They don't actually do anything. And so, uh, but at the same time, you know, she she's a celebrity. People, grown-ups Huge want celebrity. selfies with her. And she manages thousands to... Thousands and thousands of people lined... Uh, the East River when she uh, came to New York, came to New York and, and cheered for her, and wherever she goes, crowds follow her. She has a lovely posse of, uh, <laughs> of kids who uh, help her out and who are part of her. But what movement. I want, but what I want to say before I forget it is that she is she's so brave, and oh. I'm amazed that she has not. I mean, there are moments when she is overwhelmed. She gets overwhelmed by everything and the responsibility on her shoulders. Uh, and the pressure of it, but she is so committed. She has such conviction, and you just you will watch this movie and you will not know what to do with yourself because of all the feelings inside you. Exactly, I salute Except you will this. Will want to hug her. Oh, I, I, I I'm, I'm in love, love with that with child. Her. Me I'm, too. I'm. She is a hero. She's a shero. I want her to get every award out there possible, and uh, I hope that you know her activism will actually get somebody to do something because you see another. The film is kind of done on two levels. It's it's. It's both her her personal story, but it's also delivering the message of where we are and how bad things how are, bad things and are. Uh, what we need to do. So, uh, please, please watch this. You, you have you to. Will, you must. You will be so moved, and you will be um, outraged. galvanized. As, yes, and galvanized. Outraged. That's, yes. that's the word. So again, it's called "I Am Greta." It's available on Hulu starting November thirteenth. Now for the disc recommendation of the of the first. Oh, and I watched it all because I always watch them all. Yeah, please give a round of applause to Mimi for sacrificing her time to make sure that she's not missing out on any point that may have been in the exactly. film. Exactly. So that she could report back to you. It's called The Giant. Uh, it's available on demand November 13. You needn't demand it, but if... <laughs> if uh, well, this is a warning. Yeah, uh, it's written and directed by David Raboy. It stars Odessa Young, Ben Schnetzer, for all of you Another World fans, Stephen Schnetzer's son, oh. and um, Nancy Snyder, uh, Jack Kilmer, Madeline Klein, Danny Ramirez, and P.J. Marshall. And the kids um, the kids are all very good, what you can see and hear of them. Um, what you can see of them, and there goes the review. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, 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 it takes place in a small town, um, typical, typical small town, and a series of murders of girls uh, begin to happen 
just as um, the main character's uh, old boyfriend comes back to town. Now, this movie starts off in a nightmare. The, the girl keep, A young girl keeps saying, why can't I wake up? Why can't I wake up? And I don't think she w- woke up personally because the whole movie is like a fever dream. Um, and I don't think in a good way. There are some things that are, are made that way that work on a nightmare um, level. But this movie is dark. 90% of the time you can And you're can, talking literally. No, no, dark. I mean, I think he must have made it with natural light, which I'm all about. I'm all about the natural light. As a photographer, I do all natural light photography. But uh, then don't shoot everything at night, okay? <laughs> Give us a break. Um, and the sound is not good. Has he not seen the finale of Game of Thrones? I mean, does he not know? <laughs> does he not know? Well, I don't think it was. I think it was the no, it wasn't. This is the, the final yeah. season. I mean, yeah, the, I think it was the penultimate. But anyway, uh, you have to stretch to hear them say things half the time. I, I decided to wait and see, and things happen, and you don't know if it's real, uh, if it happened in the past, if it happened in the future, if it didn't happen at all. You're you are. There are a few moments of clarity where you say, okay, this is going on now. This is what's happening. Uh, I, so I watched it all the way to the end to, to make sh- so that I could see what the point of it was. And guess what? There was none. No point. <laughs> you get nothing from it. You get no resolution of any kind. You still don't know what the hell's going on. So um, avoid. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this director had a vision, which he hewed to. I mean, I mean, he he did it. He he wanted to make this this nightmarish kind of a film, and he did. But it doesn't Good for work. him. Yeah, good for him. I hope you're happy. <laughs> it's a terrible film. Sorry, you know, we don't do this often. No. We often t- we, we, well, most of the time we will try to find something good about yes. movies. But we well, the can't... acting wasn't... The acting was excellent. Yeah, but what I mean is we can't in good conscience let you go ahead and spend, spend your, your money, money on you know, this. If it's on free later on somewhere... And even then. Even then. What's the point yeah. of spending your time watching something that's not... You know, it's, it seems like a... a, a Film school uh, final project that I'm not sure he passed. <laughs> All right. So that's The Giant, yeah. November 13th, on demand. And uh, yeah, don't demand it uh, unless this review yeah. some, for some reason made you really curious. Okay, finally, we have a new movie called All Joking Aside. It also opens November 13th, directed by Shannon Coley and written by James Pickering. And starring a newcomer, I believe, because we certainly don't know her, uh, Raylene Harewood. And not a newcomer at all, Bob Markinson, whom you might remember from uh, Girlfriend's Get Your Divorce and, and many, many other, many things. other and things. And he's quite wonderful. He is. And this is very different. He usually, Completely pay, different. He usually plays a prick. And he starts off by playing a prick here, but then he shows yeah, a softer exactly. side. Exactly. Um, this is um, very indie. Uh, it takes place in New York City, and it's this young African American uh, woman who is trying to pursue her dream of becoming a stand-up comic. Now, those of you who have seen things about the behind-the-scenes of stand-up comedy know that that is one of the hardest worlds to live in. Uh, you may have seen uh, "I'm Dying Up Here," which or... is brilliant, <laughs> and even if you've seen um, um, the fabulous Mrs. Maisel, I mean, you know that it's it's very very tough. And uh, also things like "I'm Dying Up Here." Uh, these comics were mostly ready for prime time. Right. Uh, this girl is starting from just scratch. starting from scratch. Right. So she uh, performs on an open nightclub. Uh, this older guy uh, heckles, heckles her. her off the stage, and when she hears that he is basically, you know, one, he used to be one of the best in the industry. Uh, she stalks him and tries to convince him to teach her everything he knows. Uh, because she starts off, I mean, I guess she has potential, but she starts off pretty awful. Um, so I'll give you the pros and the cons of this movie. The pros is if you're interested in that sort of world, it really does a good job mm-hmm. at showing you how they work on building a set. What it, what, how do you do comedy? How do you find comedy? How do comedians see the world? Um, so it really gives you kind of those, those building blocks, yes, it was interesting. which is very interesting. And, 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 and we it, love stand up, and it literally gives you the lessons because he mm-hmm. teaches her. So he teaches us. Um, so we like that. The cons are that it's a very mediocre film, both in terms of the writing, uh, which is quite cliche, nothing, mm-hmm. nothing too no. original and the acting, which besides, uh, Bob Markinson, who is a pro, 
everybody else was mediocre at best. Yes. Um, and it showed, especially when it's the lead actress. Um, you know, the entire movie is on her shoulder. She's basically in every frame. Right. She's not terrible. She's, she's not, not terrible, good. but she's not good. Exactly. And and it shows. Mm-hmm. Um so and 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 a lot of the people around her are also not, not so very great. good, no. but the movie really is her and him mostly mm-hmm. um so it, it's kind of um you know again, if the subject matter interests you uh it definitely has something to offer um but you know it's not the best movie we've ever seen, especially no. not on the subject it's also not the worst movie we've ever seen exactly so it's as the movie, it's a mediocre grade yeah. <laughs> so this is all joking aside. Uh, opens November 13th. Okay. So this is our podcast for now, but wait, there's another podcast coming on Monday. So make sure to tune in, not on your usual Saturday, but before that, uh, because we have a lot of really good things to tell you about. I mean, uh, you can tune in on Saturday. You can, but, but then you'll be but you'll, you'll miss, be behind the curve. Yes, exactly. You, you want to know about things as they're coming, right? So, I know you like to watch them as soon as we tell you about them. Well, there's something <laughs> here starring Sarah Paulson. I think they will want well, to. Yes. Exactly. Uh, Carrie Coon also. Carrie Coon. Long. Exactly. We have some well, good stuff long. coming. Yeah, but I carry love long. <laughs> anyway, so good things to come. Make sure to check us out on Monday. And in the meantime, stay safe and stay jubilant. Don't let Yahoo! anybody rain on your fucking parade. <laughs>